Hello, welcome to a very rainy episode of Forgotten Cemeteries of Pacific Northwest. Today we're at Mount Olive Lutheran Cemetery, located in Dilly, Oregon, Washington County. Alternative names to the cemetery include Death Leaves, German Lutheran Church, and Seegers. So let's go meet some of the local residents and hear their story. A little bit about the history of the cemetery. It was established in 1902, so a little late for our taste. It has an estimated 0 to 25 burials per the Oregon Burial Site Guide. Find a grave has shown 90 memorials so far, I guess, but man, it is a small cemetery. I'm only seeing a few headstones. The cemetery used to be a private one for the Death Left family, I think that's how you say their last name. They were members of the Seegers Lutheran Church. That church was torn down, so Mount Olive's Lutheran Church took it over, um, the cemetery. Nothing fun history-wise to share about them uh, as far as the cemetery and uh, church history, just not a whole lot. However, the town Dilly, Oregon was settled in the 1840s, so a uh, pretty old community overall. A Horace and Marilda Parsons settled in the area in 1849. They built a grist mill in the area along the Tualatin River. They're buried at uh, Oak Knoll Cemetery. That looked like a fun one for a future visit. There was a William Gibson who settled in the area in 1847. He actually built a log cabin for Tabitha Moffat Brown, who came to Oregon in 1846, I believe. She was a popular pioneer uh, colonist then. The cabin's initial intention was to be like an orphan school. Later on though, it would become Pacific University. So a bit of a change size-wise, huh? <laughs> From little log cabin to a big university. She's buried at uh, Salem Pioneer Cemetery. I guess the town of Dilly was pretty active at one point, having saloons, hotels, blacksmiths, general stores, even having a baseball team, apparently. <laughs> However, in the 1960s, the last gas station and store were uh, torn down, so the town went quiet. Continuing on about the history of Dilly, Oregon, um, Dilly in 1998 made quite a buzz in the news when a convicted sex offender was going to move into the town of Dilly. He was going to live in the house of his mother. This story made national news apparently in 1998. It kind of blew up. The community talked about getting guard dogs, arming themselves, burning down the home he was moving into, and even killing the guy. The Dilly community was in our uproar, and uh, rightfully so. During a community meeting, one individual kept asking, when can I kill him? Apparently the house the sex offender was planning on moving into was like 200 feet from a school bus stop, so some serious concerns were arising. So three families got together and purchased the home for $250,000. So now you can tell the incredible story of the small little community of Dilly, Oregon. Um, because honestly, I have one headstone to cover here, not a whole lot of history. Uh, I think the story of the town is more interesting than the entire cemetery, so apologies. I did try to search around. The cemetery has been referenced as a speck along the road in my internet book searches, and uh, it's turned out to be true. And here's the only headstone in the whole cemetery. Um, that's of the Death Lefts. Kind of a cool ass name. One of the alternative names for the cemetery, and probably where the original private cemetery label comes from. Really, all I could find was John was born in Germany in 1832. Unsure when he came over to the USA. His wife is from Iowa. Um, I think they were very late arrivals to Oregon because their first son was born in 1868 in Iowa. I'm thinking 1880s on the arrival time is my estimation. Alright, time for the tour and it is rainy today. I'm sorry I haven't really released a video in a while. It's <laughs> It's been snowing in Oregon, it's been raining, there's been ice, it's been a, a miserable April overall. Not cemetery exploration weather. There's an old one, 1904. Can't read that though. There's some war vets here as well. Looks like World War I there. Still active from my understanding. well taken care of overall probably one of the better ones no vandalism or anything just a really tiny one
gorgeous one. It's got a, I forget what the medical symbol. What that represents. It's kind of neat with a cross within a cross, forming a heart. But that's kind of it. Overall, <laughs> there's not a lot of history of this one. So apologies, there's a winery across the street. So I guess if you visit, you can go get a glass of wine or something, do wine testing, taste testing. Anyways, if you got any other recommendations for cemeteries to visit in Oregon or Southern Washington that doesn't involve rainy weather or snow or ice, feel free to comment below. Hope you're doing good out there and uh, happy spring.